This is MathGuide.com. My name is Mark Karadimos. Today we're going to talk about population growth. There's going to be four sections to this video. In our first section, we're going to introduce the topic, talk about what population growth is. Uh, we'll also uh, divulge the formula and what the variables stand for. Uh, in our second section, we're going to talk about our first problem, which we'll predict uh, the number of people after a certain amount of time. In our third section, we'll talk about another problem. We're going to calculate time, given some population values. And in our fourth section, we're going to conclude and talk about global population. All right, let's get started. In our first section, we're going to talk about what it means to have population growth. Well, let's take a look at this chart. This chart indicates the difference between a linear function, red, the uh, cubic function, blue, and a green uh, exponential function. So the difference is that exponential functions start off pretty slow, and then over time they pick up a very much amount of speed, and that's what we see here in this graph. This is the characteristic shape of exponential growth. Uh, it is explosive on the long run. It explodes as we go off to the to the right side of the graph and it definitely accelerates much quicker than the other two curves in comparison. The formula we're going to use to describe the mathematics of population growth is this. So let's talk about what these letters represent. Let's start with the P. The P stands for the original amount of population that we're talking about. So it's our starting population. E is a constant that we use. It's kind of like pi is 3.14, but it goes on forever. Uh, but usually we chop the decimal at around 2.7, maybe 2.72. But it is like pi, it goes on forever. It's a constant that's used uh, in population studies. It's very common to use for reasons to be discovered and talked about in another venue. Uh, let's talk about uh, R. R is the rate. We call that the population growth rate. And that can change depending on the uh, animals or insects or peoples you're talking about. Uh, let's say T is our time. Uh, that's, of course, how much time is allowed to transpire between the initial population and the final population. And that's what A stands for. A stands for the population that we receive after some amount of time transpires. Let's tackle our first problem. In the fictitious town of Karadimosville, it's growing at a 1.5% rate. In the year 2016, it had 6,200 residents. How many people will there be in 24 years? In order to conquer this problem, we have to identify the values in the problem and match them up with the variables in our formula. So let's go through it one by one and uh, identify them as they come along. So the 1.5% is a rate, that's R. Uh, we have 6,200 residents, that's our starting population, P. Uh, we have 24 years, that's time. So we're going to pluck them in accordingly. All right, so let's get to the formula and start plucking them in. So our formula says P or A equals P E to the R T. So we don't know what the final population is for this problem. That's what we want to calculate. So I'm going to leave that as A. Our starting population, we said, was 6,200. Uh, e, again, is just going to be a constant. We're going to leave that in there, let the calculator handle that. Our first number is 1.5%. So the first thing we have to do is change this into a value without a percent. So you have to move the decimal two places over. So it'll be 0.015. That's the value we're going to use for R in the formula. And I'm going to plug that in right now. So for R, I put in is a power, 0.015. All right, next is time. 
we set our time as 24 years. So we're going to plug that in. Now, of course, what I'm going to do is plug this into a fancy calculator, like a TI Inspire. You can plug this into any calculator you like. Um, there's a very uh, complicated calculators out there that when you plug them in, it looks exactly like this. So in other words, if it has an exponent, it'll look like an exponent. So I would suggest you use a calculator like that. If you're not using a calculator like that, I would figure out what this value is here. I'd multiply those numbers together, and I would take e to that power, and then multiply that answer by 6200. Nevertheless, I'm punching it into a calculator, which I did earlier, and I get 8,886, and I get some decimal value, which I'm chopping off. I don't want any parts of people. It only makes sense that I'm going to be dealing with the integer value. So this is an approximation, of course, but we would say about 8,886 people is going to appear after 24 years. So, of course, that would be the year 2040. From 2016, add 24 years, you get 2040. All right, that's all there is to it. Let's go on to our next problem. Our last problem was relatively easy. You just plug the numbers into a calculator, and uh, out comes the answer. Well, for this next example, it's going to require a little bit more uh, us being careful and a little bit more mathematics. So in this second problem, we're going to be dealing with the United States. In the United States, it uh, has a growth rate of about 0.7%. If there were 321 million people in the year 2015, when will there be 400 million people? All right, so in order to do this problem, we have to identify what our variables are. So the 0.7% is our rate. The 321 million is our initial number of people. That's our p-value. Uh, we're dealing with the year 2015. We're going to assume that's our starting year. That's not time. That's just our starting year. We don't know what time is. Uh, we just don't know what time is, so we're going to keep the t-value uh, as an unknown, keep that T in there. But our A value, that's the amount of people that we're going to have after some value of time uh, transpires. So our A value is going to be 400 million people. All right, let's plug the numbers into the formula. So if our formula looks like this, A equals P, E to the RT. So I'm going to put 400 million. Now, keep in mind that I could put 400 here, and I'm just going to say that my units are in millions. So the A is 400 million, so I'm just going to put 400. So it's just in the units of millions. And the p-value we said was 321 million, so I'm just leaving it 321. We're going to put E. Now our rate, again, was 0.7%. So, of course, we have to change this into a decimal number without a percent. So, imagine moving this two places to the left. So, we get 0 0.007 is our rate. And that's what I'm going to put right here. Now, we don't know time, so we have to leave t in the problem. But what makes this problem very difficult is that we have a variable in the exponent position. So anytime we're dealing with a problem like this, it, uh, it forces us to deal with logarithms. So keep that in mind. In order for us to deal with the power here and you know work with logarithms, we're first going to get rid of this coefficient. And we're going to do a little algebra. So since I'm multiplying the 321 times e, I am going to divide the 320 million from both sides. OK, so when I do this, when I divide by the 320 million, you can see that the 321 millions are going to cancel. And that's the point. And that's exactly what I want to see happen. So over here, I'm going to get 400 million divided by 321 million. I could divide that to get a decimal. I'm not going to bother. OK, and over here, I'm going to put E to the 0 0.007T. Most of this is calculator work. It's punching things in the calculator. What we're here for is to do the thinking part, which is the algebra 
uh, steps. Once we can do the algebra steps, the calculator does all the mindless uh, you know, calculations. So here's where we use natural log. Now, many times we would use a log. Uh, we take the log of both sides because we have a variable in the exponent spot. But the difference is we're dealing with the base e. Anytime we're dealing with the base e, I want to deal with a log base e. I want my base here to match the base of the log. But instead of writing log base e, that's really natural log. Anytime you see ln, it really is log base e. So I'm taking the ln of both sides. Sure, you can take the log of both sides that's not base e. You could use any base you want. It doesn't have to be base e. But there is a reason why I'm using natural log base e because it'll simplify things in a moment. Okay, why am I using the natural log? Well, why am I taking the log of both sides, you may be asking? It's because there's a property of logarithms that allows you to take this power now and bring the power out in front of the logarithm. That is a, po a property of logarithms. If you don't know that, you need to look that up. Okay, that is something that's covered usually before talking about logarithm problems of this magnitude. Okay, bring that in front. All right now we bring that in front. Our right side of the problem is going to look like this. We've got 0.007t times now the natural log of e. Because what we did is just bring this right out in front of the natural log of e. Okay, so now there's a catch. Now, the reason why we're doing this is because the natural log of e, the natural log of e, if you were to plug this into a calculator, is equal to 1. So we're really taking 1 and multiplying it by this 0.007t. So if I'm multiplying this by 1, I don't even need to write this. 1 times 0.007t is just 0.007t. So what does that mean for me? It means I'm going to erase this. It's like I don't even have to bother with it, right? So I erase that, and it's, it's gone. So from this step, we're now going to do just a little bit of algebra. Since I'm multiplying t by the 0 0.007, we of course are going to divide both sides by 0 0.007. 0 0.007. So in doing so, you can see that the decimal values are going to cancel here, and we'll be left with just t. So now all we have to do is plug this very carefully in a calculator. And I, again, would try to use a calculator where you could plug it in, and it looks like this in the calculator. If not, you have to take great care. I'd have to divide these, take the natural log of this decimal value, and then when I get that answer, divide the answer by 0 .007. I would rather just plug it into a really fancy calculator. Nevertheless, if you could get over that hurdle, you will then get your value for time. And our value for time turns out to be 31.4 years. So it looks like uh, when we do this problem that we are going to get a 31.4 years, almost 31 and a half years. So if we started this problem in the year 2015 and we add 31, almost 31 and a half, we're going to get almost a half a year. We're going to get 6, 4, so we're going to get 20, 46. So about halfway through, approximately halfway through the year 2046, we should get somewhere very close to 400 million people in the United States, assuming this rate stays constant throughout that whole time period. Okay, that takes care of our second problem. You can see that you need to know logarithms in order to do this problem a problem of this type. A great deal of study has been done with uh, human population as well as the population of insects and a variety of other animals but uh, when it comes to human population one should take a look at this graph. There have been a couple predictions about how human population is going to carry out over time. Um, we do know that the Earth does have finite resources and that human population cannot, mathematically it cannot continue to go in a skyrocket uh, exponential growth fashion. Uh, if no care was to be taken, uh, human population would reach 
uh, continue to go up, skyrocket up, reach some kind of cataclysmic situation where there'd be a resource issue, and that would be a catastrophe that I cannot even begin to describe. So um, if care is taken to limit human population, like it is in several uh, advanced countries, uh, like considered to be some of which are in Europe, uh, we could see that those countries are slowing their population growths. Uh, if we could uh, globally take advantage of that type of scenario and limit population growth altogether, um, voluntarily of course, we could see that there are a couple scenarios where the population will start to level out or if it of course is uh, constricted too much, if the growth is constricted too much, you could have negative growth, in other words decline of population. Um, uh, definitely the red is uh, placed in that color for a reason because it is, ca it is cla cataclysmic. Uh, it's just a matter of making sure that these uh, values start to flatten out minimally, if not go down a bit. Uh, we could also talk about family planning. Uh, I'm not going to get into uh, the philosophy of when it's a good time to have children or not, but it's clear that unless one is self-sufficient, uh, having children in any other type of uh, situation is not advantageous to uh, the person having the children and the child, of course. So keep those things in mind. Family planning is always a good thing. All right. So this has been MathGuy.com. Uh, make sure you go back to MathGuy.com to check out our other instructional uh, videos, our interactive quizzes, and text-based lessons. Okay, take care.